All right, guys, in this video, we're going to be looking at a sample AP Physics question dealing with Unit 5 content with uh, mo momentum and impulse. And this is a publicly available question. So we've got a diagram here of an arrow being shot towards a pumpkin that's hanging from a branch by a rope. And the question reads, an archer tests various arrowheads by shooting arrows at a pumpkin that is suspended from a tree branch by a rope, as shown above. When struck head-on by the arrow, the pumpkin swings upward on the rope. The maximum angle theta that the rope makes with the vertical is different for each arrowhead that the archer tests. Each arrow, including its arrowhead, has the same mass, m, and is shot with the same velocity, v sub 0, towards the right. So the arrowheads are made of different material, however, and each behaves differently when it strikes the pumpkin as described below. So here's three different scenarios that, that happen. The embedded arrow strikes the pumpkin and remains embedded while the pumpkin swings to an angle, theta sub embedded. So we've got the arrow coming towards the pumpkin, the arrow sticks to the pumpkin, and both of those things swing off to some final angle given right here. A second scenario is called the pass arrow. It passes all the way through the pumpkin and continues traveling away from the archer while the pumpkin swings to some other angle, uh, theta sub pass. And so it passes through the pumpkin, uh, loses less velocity than this one does, um, but it's going to give this pumpkin a little bit of velocity to swing up, but that arrow is going to continue to travel. And the third and final scenario is called the bounce arrow. The arrow bounces off the pumpkin back towards the archer while the pumpkin swings to an angle, theta sub bounce. And so um, let's you know imagine we've got some kind of like elastic material, or let's say let's about let's say it's got a bouncy ball in the end, and the arrow hits the pumpkin, bounces back the other way, so it comes into the positive direction, goes off in the negative direction, and gives this pumpkin some velocity and swings up to some final angle. And so part A says to rank the three angles, the embedded angle. Uh, or the angle due to the embedded arrow, the angle due to the pass-through arrow, and the angle due to the bouncing arrow. From greatest to least, in the spaces, indicate below. Use one for the greatest, two for the next greatest, and so on. If any two or all three angles are the same, use the same number for their ranking. So the purpose of this question is to, to basically rank these and then be able to, any paragraph length response, explain why you rank them that way. So I'm, I'm giving you what, what I think the rankings are, and uh, I'll go through that paragraph length, length response. So uh, the arrow that bounces is going to lead to the largest angle reached by the pumpkin. The embedded arrow is going to lead to the second largest angle. And the arrow that passes through is going to lead to the smallest angle that goes up. Okay. So in all of these cases, uh, the way that we need to think about this is this is a like a collision so we need to be thinking about momentum impulse and, and we'll see momentum conservation okay so part b this is the meat of the question it says in a clear coherent paragraph length response um, that may also contain figures and or equations justify your ranking so we're going to try to justify uh, this ranking right here that the bouncing arrow has the largest angle and the the arrow that passes through will lead to the smallest angle that the pumpkin reaches. So um, I thought first we'd clarify um, what's going to lead to the largest angle. So the maximum angle the pumpkin makes with the vertical depends on the velocity the pumpkin has after the collision. So whether the arrow gets embedded in here, passes through the pumpkin, or bounces off, um, how that angle depends on how high the pumpkin reaches, and that depends on how fast the pumpkin is traveling after the collision or after the force interaction with the arrow. Well, why? Because a higher velocity means a higher kinetic energy when it's at the bottom, which will get transferred to a greater gravitational potential energy by the pumpkin and a greater final height reached by the pumpkin. So the greatest height will be the greatest angle. Okay? And so if we're going to justify why uh, the embedded arrow leads to the largest angle, we need to be able to justify why the, sorry, not the embedded arrow, the bouncing arrow leads to the largest angle, 
we have to justify why the arrow that bounced off is going to give the pump in the largest velocity after the collision or after the force interaction. Okay. So let's do that right now. So if we treat the arrow and pumpkin as a system, so no matter what the interaction is, if we say that the the system is the arrow pumpkin system or the pumpkin arrow system, then I'm just going to kind of walk you through some equations uh, kind of real quick to kind of give you an idea of like what the paragraph length response is going to be talking about. And then I'll go through what the paragraph length response is. So if we treat this like a system uh, and we're thinking about force interactions on a system, we can think about whether the system as a whole changes its momentum, right? Not each individual object in the system right yet, but the system as a whole. So here's our impulse equation. Uh, it's change in momentum equals force times time. This is net force. Or the change in momentum of a system of objects is equal to the net force on that system multiplied by time. Well, if we consider this one whole system, the net force on the system is zero during any of the force interactions or any of the collisions. And so that zero, which means the system as a whole will not change its momentum. Uh, and so no matter what happens with the arrow and the pumpkin, the total momentum of the system has to stay the same. It can't change. Well, the momentum of the system changes if the, well, that's equal to the change in momentum of the arrow plus the change in momentum of the pumpkin. The change in momentum of the whole system is the sum of the change in momentums of each part of the system. And we said that the system can't change momentum. So that means like, how can change in momentum of the arrow and the change in momentum of the pumpkin always add to zero? Well, if, you know, let's rearrange this and solve for the change in momentum of the pumpkin, or I guess let's just start here. If the arrow loses momentum, the change in momentum is negative, the pumpkin has to gain momentum by the same amount so that the sum is still zero, right? In each case, the arrow is slowing down, um, and so it's going to lose momentum, so the, mo the pumpkin has to gain momentum, right? And if we just rearrange this equation and solve for the change in momentum of the pumpkin, we can see that like it's equal to the negative change in the arrow's momentum. So if the arrow loses momentum, its change in momentum is negative, and the negative of a negative is positive. So as the arrow loses momentum, again, the pumpkin has to gain momentum. So and when the pumpkin gains the most momentum, it's going to have the largest velocity and then, like we talked about, lead to the largest angle. So this is kind of a little diagram to help you think through that, the sequence of equations. Um, but what does it sound like in a paragraph length response? So, right, which could include the, some of these equations and or this diagram. So if we treat the arrow and pumpkin as a system, then during all then, during all the types of collisions, the net force on the system is zero. Since the change in momentum for a system is equal to the net force on that system multiplied by time, zero net force means the system's momentum will not change. For the system's momentum to stay the same, the pumpkin's change in momentum must be the same size as the arrow's change in momentum. And when the arrow's change in momentum is negative, which is the case in all of these situations, the pumpkin's change in momentum must be positive. So the arrow with the largest change in velocity will have the largest change in momentum, which will give the pumpkin its largest change in momentum. Right. So we're looking for which arrow has the largest change in momentum, which comes from the largest change in velocity, which will be the situation that gives the pumpkin the largest change in momentum and therefore the largest angle. So the air which passes through the pumpkin has the smallest change in its velocity. So it will lead to the smallest angle. Right, it's going to have the smallest change in momentum, so give the pumpkin the, the least momentum after the interaction. The bounce arrow though, that's remember the one that we made the case will lead to the largest angle will have the largest change in velocity. Why? Because the bounce arrow goes from a positive velocity to a negative velocity. 
right? Because it, yeah, because it goes from a positive to a negative velocity. So it will lead to the largest angle.